organization. By show of hands, how many people this is the first meeting they've ever been at for OWASP? Okay, so look around, right? So there's a lot of new people in this space, which is interesting, uh, which is always great. Uh, and then also the folks that have uh, blue dots uh, on, your, on, your, on your badge, those are OWASP members. Uh, so thank you in advance for supporting the organization. Um, those individuals uh, certainly are appreciated because that kind of helps drive the organization. So a little bit about OWASP before we get started, uh, and then we'll drive into our presentations. Um, first and foremost, the organization uh, is structured as a, uh, as a nonprofit, right? So as an organization, we do our best to try to collaborate with people around the world. Uh, OWASP Foundation today has about 43,000 people around the world, and we kind of self-group ourselves into like builders, breakers, defenders, uh, makers, whatever other group you want to self-categorize yourself into, but it's a great place to play with software. Uh, many of us are under NDA during the day working for our day jobs. Uh, OWASP is certainly a place that you're not under NDA, right? You have a chance to kind of work on stuff and com uh, perhaps commit back to the tree. Uh, and for the students in the room, something you can work on that will be with you probably for the rest of your career uh, that will help kind of point out some things that you worked on in the open source space. Um, the community, as I said, is, is focused on being volunteers. Uh, everyone participates in the organization in many different ways. Uh, there's folks that really spend a lot of time here at the chapter helping out with evangelism, uh, folks that work on sponsorships, work on you know, setting up venues, uh, and certainly you know, the, the more help, more, you know, more hands make less work. Uh, we have a kind of a simple principle, right? With most organizations, there's some sort of a sort of a guiding principle. Uh, we definitely want to be in the category of, of uh, guys that are, you know, doing things on this on the side of being creative, but also kind of making sure that we're driving things forward for the organization of computer security in a legitimate form. Um, really, nobody wants to be, uh, you know, identified as organizations that you know are causing mis mischief and havoc. Uh, although there are organizations and people that want to spend that time there, uh, most of the folks at OWASP actually want to make a difference uh, with the safety and security for the internet in particular. Um, so with that, you know, kind of our code of ethics sort of outlines that. Uh, and if you profess or if you, uh, as a professional, uh, want to be a part of this community uh, and get that little blue star badge thing, that's you know that kind of is profession of saying you know, hey, this group is something I want to represent uh, and be a part of. Um, so we look forward to folks, you know, spending some time with us. Um, a couple days ago, or a day ago, uh, we were up to 150 people on the RSVP. Uh, that would already exceed the space here. Uh, I think now we're up to like 220 or something, so we'll see how this kind of happens. Um, typically, as most of us know here in New York, you get off work, you try to find a, a way downtown or uptown, and then, of course, you know, uh, delays happen, so this room usually gets pretty crowded. We're going to spend a little bit of time talking more about the chapter uh, and some of the foundational efforts of what we're focused on. Um, and that hopefully this will help lead into some interesting conversation as well tonight. Um, first and foremost, our chapter goals are real simple, right? So driving the mission and trying to kind of drive it forward allows us to collaborate with other groups. Um, membership growth is really important. Individuals and corporate supporters help power, help make the organization more active, and we fund events and summits. Uh, at summits, we focus on new projects, right? New projects of folks sitting down, working on actual code, and committing either doc uh, documents and best practices, uh, or actually working on projects that will be helpful in the security of the internet in particular. Um, we always want to fund uh, those projects, sponsor them, make sure that they're groomed and that they can become flagship projects at the OWASP Foundation. Uh, we're also looking for additional organizers and additional leaders. Uh, some of the folks in the room here um, are, you've know, been involved in the chapter now for a very, very long time, uh, but the more folks that actually help out, it actually makes it a lot easier on, on everybody. Plus, if you have a concept or an idea that you want to kind of float and figure out how you want to drive this organization forward, we're always looking for people to step up and, again, raise your hand and volunteer. It's that simple. Um, we covered the blue star already, uh, but a lot of times people ask, you know, FAQs is, you know, how do I become a speaker here, right? Like, I want to present something. Uh, what are you guys looking for? Uh, and I always say we're looking for software topics uh, in various areas. Uh, if your organization happens to present a maybe a commercial solution, you feel kind of weird about. Well, this isn't a sales pitchy sort of an event, right? This isn't like a, uh, this isn't that sort of forum. Uh, but if you've ever been to a DEF CON or a Black Hat, sort of the conversation kind of goes like this: If the presentation is educational and it's focused on open source and software, we want to hear from you. Uh, if you're able to present on a topic that's useful to the community, we want to hear from you. Uh, we actually want to also, in New York, uh, have that debate, right? So if a presentation doesn't really meet that criteria, um, it's a good opportunity to kind of point that out, right? There is a speaker agreement. We do record a lot of our presentations and put them up on YouTube. We try our best to keep things as clean as possible. So if anybody feels that you know, they're not getting uh, that sort of uh, open and transparent piece, please raise your hand and let, and let the speaker know. 
Uh, but with that, you know, wouldn't it be possible to have an organization of this size uh, in making the changes and effects it does around the world without corporate supporters? Uh, corporate supporters uh, are aligned to the trade organization, uh, helping OWASP Foundation be, do, do its operational components, make sure that we can do outreach uh, and continue to raise visibility uh, from different spots. So organizations, academic supporters are really important in sort of driving the mission because these are organizations I always say that you should be talking to them uh, when you need something in re reference to software security. Here at the local chapter, local chapter supporters here in New York, you know, these are the organizations that make it happen, both venue hosts like UBS, uh, as well as other organizations that will be having meetings out the rest of the year, uh, and of course our local supporters that help organize and, and, and drive forward the ideas and things that we're doing here. Our current balance uh, in the local chapter is about $26,000. Uh, and what I reason why I bring that up is because we always look to spend that money uh, on interesting and creative projects. Uh, we're about to spin up an opportunity with a virtual environment with New York Internet, who obviously is based here in New York, uh, and that's going to be able to provide members of the chapter access to a virtual lab, where they'll be able to work in our environment, be able to work on OWASP projects, commit code to the tree, and be in an encapsulated environment within New York Internet that New York Internet is working out with the chapter. So if you'd like to work on that project, please let me know. We're definitely looking for people to step up and be a part of that and help build out uh, what will be the virtual lab. And of course, there's you know some investment there. Uh, academia grants for the folks at NJIT. I think there's one or two in the room. Uh, we've worked with NJIT to help their capstone program. Uh, so how that works is we put out a grant, we define a project we'd like people to work on, uh, NJIT assigns students to it, they work on the sprint, and they get awarded the money. So if that's interesting to you, uh, there's certainly opportunity there as well. Um, and of course the security meetups and socials and things like that. For the folks that are going to stick around after this meeting, it's kind of tradition that after our meetings we typically find a local bar and go grab the first drink on OWASP. And I think tonight, Tommy, you were saying what, Johnny, Utah's? You're going to ride the bull out here, right? Again. Yeah. Uh, you're going to ride the bull again. Yes, I end up riding the bull. Yes. Yeah. So if anyone wants to join us, that's where we'll be going after the event is at Johnny, Utah's. You think these two want to ride the bull? Sure. I think they, I, we should see if stand the bull the longest. <laughs> Uh, upcoming events, uh, just touch on a couple of them for your calendars. Uh, these are the events that are already marked out for the rest of the year. Uh, these are not the only ones. These are the ones for New York City. Uh, in New Jersey in particular, across the river, there's a bunch of meetings coming up. Uh, feel free to hit up the Jersey site. And if you happen to travel or you, know, you want to go around the world, OWASP has 220 chapters all over the place. So at least you know, I always look for you know, fellow OWASPers, I guess, when I travel. Uh, and there's certainly more and more meetings popping up around the world. I wouldn't do uh, justice to the foundation without raising visibility for the big one, uh, Elizabeth, from the Sanford and Son sort of analogy. Uh, the big one is going to be OWASP AppSec USA this year on September uh, in uh, San Francisco. Uh, for those that remember 2013, it was here in New York City. Uh, and again, if we can get a bunch of volunteers to help out, perhaps 2016, we might do it again here in New York City if you're interested. So let me know and we'll put together that volunteer team that drives this event. These events are about 2,500 AppSec folks uh, from all over the world that collaborate and and present, so it's a pretty interesting time. So tonight's agenda uh, is uh, kind of straightforward. Um, we're gonna have some different folks spend some time with you. Uh, we're gonna try and limit our presentations to about 30 minutes or so with about 10 minutes for Q&A. So give or take about 40 minutes in total. We have a lot of talk, a lot of content tonight. Uh, if you want the speaker slides when they're done, please see them. Reach up and give them your card or whatever and, and tell them you want to copy of the slides, best way to do it. Uh, and if the speakers are in the room want to upload their slides to the OWASP meetup site, you can do that too under the file section. Uh, but basically it's an interactive session, right? So uh, let's, let's try to make it so much uh, like that. Uh, also, uh, as I said, if there's any additional um, information that's needed, uh, Dawn, who's checked you in, would probably be the best person to chat with. Uh, one of the things we do have coming up uh, here in May uh, is a five-day uh, CSSLP training class with ISC Squared. Uh, if you're a professional in the space and you want to uh, profess your certification and, and go through that, uh, it's a really interesting uh, organization, really interesting uh, certification, uh, and that's happening uh, uh, here uh, in May. Uh, Fabio Sorello, who happens to be an OWASP board member, will be doing the training. Uh, and for those that don't know, I sit on the board of directors with ISC Squared as well uh, for the ASAC. So it's a pretty good event, I think, around software security. Uh, and that's uh, pretty much what we got going tonight.